Who is the one man Luka Doncic has never forgiven and what could he possibly have done to make Luka despise him? Well, Luka has always had very high expectations for his teammates due to the fact that as a young player, he has been one of the best individual talents we have ever seen. In his first five seasons combined, Luka averaged 27.6 points, 8.6 rebounds, and 8 assists a game. Only five players in NBA history have averaged at least 25 points, 5 assists, and 5 rebounds per game in their first five seasons and every player on this list who is not named Luka is considered an all-time legend. Going further, in the current NBA, Luka has been named first team All-NBA the last four seasons in a row. Only three players in the post-merger era have made All-NBA four times in their first five years, Larry Bird, Tim Duncan, and Luka Doncic. Luka is the youngest player on this list by two years. However, despite this historic run of success at a young age, Luka remains on the Dallas Mavericks with a roster that we can only call questionable. Dallas has no other young stars alongside Luka, and they also do not have the trade pieces required to bring in a big star. But at one point they did. In 2020, the Mavs had a 24-year-old Kristaps Porzingis, who had just been named an NBA All-Star two years earlier, giving the Mavericks what seemed like the perfect pick-and-roll partner for Luka. This duo was supposed to lead them into the next decade. Nash and Nowitzki 2.0 only. Instead, we have this clip from Kristaps Porzingis as he is currently on Boston. Do you feel like there was a little bit of a young bull with you, specifically with like the Luca dynamic? Early on, for sure. Yeah. I think communication, like maturity communication on both of our parts uh, should have been better. It's clear that on Porzingis' side, things are cool now. After doing his time and being freed from the Washington Wizards, it is Kristaps Porzingis who is on the number one seed Celtics. It is Porzingis who should be playing on a roster that competes for a championship for years to come. Luka remains in Dallas, but after watching Porzingis' success on the Celtics, it's apparent these two could have been able to make it work, which brings up two questions. Why did Kristaps Porzingis fail with the Dallas Mavericks, and more importantly, why does Luka Doncic still not forgive him? So what's up guys, Mike here, and when it comes to Kristaps Porzingis and the Mavs, this is how Luka reacted after KP was traded. Kristaps Porzingis, that was a big trade that happened. Well, it was surprising, you know, I was actually taking a nap, and I woke up, I saw KP was traded, I didn't expect it at all. Things didn't work the way it should. It's as if Luka could not care less. Remember, this was the second best player on his roster getting moved. Unfortunately, Luka did care. He was just hiding his real reactions of relief or possible joy. Luka has remained very quiet on the KP front. When asked in press conferences, he said he respects Porzingis' professionalism. He's always said he respects his professionalism. Only that's all we've heard, and that is where this story gets complicated. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank Ada for sponsoring today's video. As did you know, there are treatments available now for COVID-19. Yup, that means there's something you can do if you do catch it to avoid getting really sick. The colder months are coming up, we all know that, and COVID-19 cases are on the rise. So it is important if you or your loved ones are at high risk of developing severe COVID-19 to know about the treatment options that are available to you if you're eligible. That way we can get that treatment and spend time together. And taking charge of your health is always a smart move. So check out Ada's free questionnaire. It's quick, easy, and helps you get the info you need on COVID-19 to stay healthy this season. Make sure to go click the link down below to see if you're eligible and to learn more about treatment options. Again, the questionnaire is very easy. Just click the link in the description down low. Thank you to Ada for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into that video. Because on the court, KP did appear to be a professional while Luca did this to Porzingis. Several videos during this time period were created that showed Luca seemingly refusing to pass the ball to KP in situations that at times appeared to be ridiculous. Watching Luca with his infinite court vision continuously ignoring KP is painful to any basketball fan's soul. This is absolutely the sign of an immature young player who was definitely still figuring things out. It is also the sign, though, of an extreme conflict. So we know, while Luca certainly did not love Porzingis' time in Dallas, Luca was not blameless. I'm sure a veteran version of him would have taken a much different approach. Instead, though, we had a classic story of two gigantic egos clashing, only it is Luca who we know is very vocal with his emotions. It is Luca who we know can be found screaming at referees possibly today. In 2020 and 2021, 
one though, Luka could be found arguing with his teammates on the court, seemingly throwing a tantrum at times. This doesn't add up. Luka was a professional basketball player at the age of 16. He comes from a very professional background, and he also will do anything to win, we know this. On top of that, several of his teammates have highly praised him, and his current teammates fight for him on a nightly basis on the court. I think Dwight Powell might die for him. So why was Luka so triggered during this 2020 season? Well, how about because Porzingis, while silent, was certainly letting his own massive ego show at the time. Chris that Porzingis, some people have accused him of being jealous. From my sources in Dallas, this past year, his jealousy was considered more problematic mm -hmm. than his game. KP, though, is a stoic man. He's a professional. He did not let it show on the court. I do have respect for that as well. However, if we go to the stat sheet, the evidence of what Porzingis was doing is right in front of us in the form of true shooting percentage and usage rate. During this time period, it was known Kristaps wanted the ball more. He thought the offense should revolve more around him. In the 2020 season, KP had a usage rate over Nikola Jokic, as his 27% usage rate was good for 32nd in the league. In 2020, KP had a true shooting percentage of 55.1%, which was good for 128th. In the 2024 season for the Boston Celtics, KP has a usage percentage of 23.2, good for 69th, and a true shooting percentage of 65.9%, good for 11th in the entire NBA. A drastic difference, and during their time together, Kobe Brian and Shaquille O'Neal openly traded criticism at each other in the media, but were still able to put their pride to the side and three-peat. They didn't last two seasons together and one of them got shipped away. They won three titles. That is because both Shaq and Kobe were true megastars. During the Lakers three-peat as the second guy, Kobe was named second team All-NBA, second team All-NBA, then first team All-NBA, as he was also first team All-Defense, second team All-Defense, and second team All-Defense. Porzingis, in the 2020 and 2021 seasons has admitted that he let his ego take over. It is obvious he saw himself on the same superstar path as Luka and can we blame him? Porzingis was very hyped up. If I was in his shoes myself, maybe I would have thought that the ball should have came to me more, but the stat comparison between Luka and KP in their two years together is not even a comparison. Luka played at a near MVP level while KP played at a very respectable, almost all-star level. However, those are very, very different things. KP has thrived in Boston because he has accepted his role as not the true superstar on the team. He knows that Jason Tatum is. In 2021, Luka and KP's last season together, the Mavericks would lose to the Clippers in the first round as KP complained about his role of being told to stand in the corner and shoot. At this point in his career, Porzingis still saw himself as a guy that might be able to become a Joel Embiid MVP type. The stats show us that he was shooting like that, but not performing like that. And then the very very next year after Porzingis was traded, with Dwight Powell playing instead of KP, the Mavericks reached the Western Conference Finals as Luka continued to be the same player, which is really just a huge loss for all of us as basketball fans. Because in 2020 and in 2021, the media took over and we all heard the same thing. Luka and Porzingis just don't fit together. In fact, we still hear that. They just didn't fit. It couldn't work there. Why? They easily could have. If Luka and KP, both of them, had tucked away those egos, well, we are seeing right now in Boston what Porzingis is capable of. And really, where was the logic? We had a six foot eight first team all NBA point guard running pick and roll or pick and pop action with a seven foot two all star center who could either dive to the rim and dunk or duck back and shoot threes. On paper, this seemed ideal. Only Kristaps Porzingis never, ever dove to the Rim, to a degree where it truly seemed like he was making a point. In 2020, Chris Ops took a career high 7.13 three-pointers a game, 2.3 more than he had taken with his last season with the Knicks in 2018. If we look at Porzingis' shot chart when he was a young star in 2018, he was named an all-star, but we find two things. One, despite the all-star nod, KP was shooting way too many long twos. He was just playing inefficient basketball. However, two, he was at least switching up his shots. He had a versatile offensive game, and maybe that is because he had more offensive freedom, but here is another clip of Porzingis just admitting that him and Luca were not exactly mature together. We were playing a game in Memphis. Rick called a timeout. He's mumbling a bunch of words, and it's clearly out of anger. Rick takes him out of the game, and, and Luca reacts or whatever. He's now like 10 feet away. Rick was like, would you guys stop, stop being babies? <laughs> 
and you go, why don't you tell Luca to stop being a baby? And Rick goes, hey, Luca, stop being a baby. <laughs> I think we can agree why Luca may have gotten frustrated at the fact that Porzingis shot 73% at the rim and absolutely awfully everywhere else, but continued to take mid-range jumper after mid-range jumper. Even his three-point shooting in this season on over seven attempts per game was just average. So while Luca may respect the professionalism, the on-court shots KP took and his refusal to ever work with Luca is why Luca will never forgive Porzingis for his time in Dallas, as right now, it is Luca's biggest young star rival, Jason Tatum, who Porzingis is, of course, perfectly fitting in well with. It is Boston, where, of course, Porzingis is 11th in the NBA in true shooting percentage now. It is in Boston, where Porzingis can win titles over Luca. We know Luca is one of the biggest competitors in the league, and we saw with Devin Booker and Luca, Luca is always seeking revenge. I'm interested to see if we do ever get a playoff matchup between these two. Too. That is it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I want to know whose side are you on? Do you think that Luca took things too far with his no passing? Do you think Luca was a baby, or do you think Porzingis, with his shooting, was doing his best to impersonate a human brick? Let me know down below. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.